Get ready to explore the thrilling mysteries of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Join us as we uncover the secrets of this historic event and uncover the untold stories of the astronauts' journey. Neil said, uh, I think we might be a little long. Yes, we're about to launch into space to unravel the mysteries of the universe, and you're invited to join us. From religious ceremonies taking place on the lunar surface to severe storms that threaten the lives of American astronauts, these are the 20 secrets about the Apollo 11 moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> Launch was protested. On July 16, 1969, the world watched in awe as Apollo 11 lifted off from Florida's Kennedy Space Center. The mission was a major milestone in human space exploration, but it was also sparking protests around the world. In the United States and beyond, activists urged that the space race was a waste of money and resources. For the United States, it was a particularly costly endeavor. The Apollo mission cost an estimated $24 billion, a sum that was equivalent to around $144 billion in today's dollars. That's a whole lot of money. Opponents of the Apollo mission in the United States argued that the money would have been better spent on social welfare programs or providing aid to impoverished countries. Many African Americans also voiced concerns about the mission, arguing that the space race was a distraction from the civil rights movement and the fight for racial equality. The protest didn't stop the mission from launching, though. On July 16, 1969, the Saturn V rocket thundered off the launch pad, carrying Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins on their way to the moon. Yep, you may not have known it before, but people really did protest the moon landing. And now it's time for our open discussion. This is why NASA never returned to the moon. Yes, this terrifying image has got the internet shaking in their space boots. Could this really be what it looks like? We know what you're thinking. How did a rotting zombie come to be buried on the moon? Well, the answer is a total mystery. All we know is that this photograph appears to show an astronaut making this grisly discovery. So what do you guys think about this startling viral image? Let us know by using the hashtag open discussion in the comments. Holy Communion on the Moon No matter where you go, Christianity has left its mark, even on the moon. On July 20th, 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins became the first humans to set foot on the moon. As they stepped off the lunar module, Aldrin decided to do something truly spectacular. He decided to take communion on the moon, becoming the first person in history to do so. Aldrin had been a member of the Presbyterian Church for over two decades and had previously served as an elder in his local church. He wanted to honor his faith and the momentous occasions of being the first human to walk on the moon by celebrating communion. The communion service was brief, but it was a powerful moment. Aldrin read from a special edition of the Bible that had been printed on a lightweight gold-plated disc and he used some of the wine and bread that had been given to him by the church. The communion on the moon was a powerful symbol of faith, and it was seen as a powerful statement of hope and progress in a time of great uncertainty. It showed that even in the midst of the most ambitious and challenging endeavors, faith can still be celebrated. Since then, astronauts have continued to celebrate communion on space missions, a testament to Aldrin's bold decision to honor his religion during the Apollo 11 mission. Yep, it just goes to show, no matter how far we are from home, we can still find comfort in our beliefs in the vastness of space. Neil Armstrong almost died. Have you ever heard of a lunar landing research vehicle? No? Well, you're in for a real treat. This amazing piece of engineering was created by NASA in the early 1960s to help them practice the difficult task of landing a spacecraft on the moon. It was also known as the Flying Bedstead because it looked like a bed frame with four large thrusters on the bottom. The LLRV was an important part of the Apollo program, the effort to send humans to the moon. It had a metal frame with four powerful rockets, two of which could be used to control pitch and yaw, and two to control altitude and thrust. The LLRV also had two smaller rockets at the back for stability. It was designed to fly at up to 10,000 feet and reach speeds of up to 220 miles per hour. It was so powerful that it could simulate the gravity on the moon and allow astronauts to practice their lunar landings before they left Earth. But the LLRV would turn out to have some serious problems. A terrifying accident happened when Neil Armstrong was flying an experimental lunar module at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. He was supposed to be testing out the craft's speed, but things didn't go according to plan. 
The craft ended up going too fast and it caused the engine to overheat. Armstrong was forced to eject from the craft just in time before it crashed into the ground and exploded. Luckily, Armstrong was unharmed and he was able to go on the Apollo 11 mission that he's now famously known for. In fact, his experience in the plane crash helped him understand the importance of safety and emergency procedures, which helped him during the mission. So the next time you hear about Neil Armstrong, remember that he almost didn't go where no one had gone before because of a fiery plane crash. Pretty wild, right? Michael Collins remained in the orbit. Did you know that the Apollo 11 mission was made possible by the hard work of an astronaut who never even set foot on the moon? His name was Michael Collins, and he was the commander module pilot on the mission. He was responsible for taking care of the command module, which was the spacecraft that stayed in orbit around the moon while Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin descended to the lunar surface. During his time in orbit, Collins flew around the moon alone for 21 hours and 24 minutes. And even though he didn't get to experience the same things as Armstrong and Aldrin, he still played an essential role in the success of the mission. Collins even helped guide the lunar module to a safe landing on the moon. After the mission, Collins continued to have a successful career in the space program, and even served as the first director of the National Air and Space Museum. So the next time you hear about the Apollo 11 mission, remember to thank Michael Collins for his hard work and dedication. A pen that saved Apollo 11. Have you ever heard about the incredible story of the pen and the broken switch from the Apollo 11 mission? During the first ever moonwalk, one of the astronauts accidentally broke a switch that was necessary to fire back the engines. That could have been a major disaster if they weren't able to get back to the command module. But luckily, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had a plan. They had a special pen with them called the Duro Rocket Pen that they had been using during the mission. They realized that they could use the pen to fix the broken switch, and believe it or not, it worked. The lunar module pilot jammed the pen's plastic tip into the hole left by the broken switch and miraculously was able to fire back the engines, not only saving themselves but also the historic moon mission and the future of the Apollo program. The two items have been a part of Buzz's personal collection ever since NASA presented them to him after successfully completing the Apollo 11 mission in 1969. The pen and the broken switch are even accompanied by a provenance letter by Buzz Aldrin that narrates the entire incident. Now that's a real part of space history. The black felt tip pen has a brushed aluminum body with an integrated pocket clip on the cap that is stamped with rocket and the Velcro swatch attached to it. The pen and broken switch are now being auctioned off and have a pre-sale estimate of between $1 million and $2 million. Imagine that, who knew a pen could save a mission? A song opposing the mission. Now, you may have heard of Gil Scott Heron's classic song, Whitey on the Moon. But have you ever stopped to think about why it still feels so relevant today? Decades after it was originally released? Well, the answer lies in its powerful lyrics and the message they convey. The title of the song refers to the 1969 moon landing, when two white astronauts were sent to explore the moon. Across the Rio Grande, running with coyotes, where the streets are paved with gold. Through the lyrics, Heron is challenging the idea that the US government was willing to invest in space exploration while ignoring the poverty and racism experienced by African Americans living in the US. So the next time you listen to Whitey on the Moon, don't just enjoy the rhythm and the rhyme. Listen to the message and think about how it applies to our world today. It's an important reminder that we can't ignore the issues of inequality and consumerism that still exist in our society. The Error Code 1202. It's crazy how many times the moon landing nearly didn't happen. When Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin looked down and saw the 1202 program alarm beeping away in their spaceship, they knew they had been thrown a curveball. It was something they hadn't seen in training, and usually that meant it was time to hit the abort button. But this time was different. The 1202 and 1201 alarms were the real deal. Eagle, Houston, you're a go for landing, over. So the only response was to complete their mission land on the moon. It was a dramatic moment in an already dramatic event that could have forced an abort and left the commander of Apollo 12, Pete Conrad, as history's first man on the moon instead. The 1202 program alarm could have killed Apollo 11's landing, but as we know, Apollo 11 thankfully made it to the surface. Their counterparts in mission control in Houston had the same panicked response. Charlie Duke, the flight controller, was a little rattled when he said, we're go on that alarm. 
but he knew that the Apollo 11 mission was still a go for the lunar landing. It was thanks to some of the best computer programmers around the astronauts and the crew in Houston, had a chance to make history. With that, the Eagle set off the moon and the rest, as they say is history. Error codes happen to the best of us, even astronauts. Hamilton almost saved the mission. Have you ever heard of Margaret Hamilton? She was an incredible woman who made a huge contribution to the Apollo 11 space mission. She wrote the software that made the mission possible, and she was only in her 20s at the time. Hamilton wrote the software that guided the Apollo spacecraft to the moon. This was no small feat, considering she was working with limited resources and a team of only four engineers. She wrote the code in a way that was able to anticipate and account for any dangerous situations that could come up during the mission. Hamilton's work was also revolutionary because she was one of the first to recognize the importance of software in a space mission. Before Hamilton, software was often overlooked, and instead the focus was on the physical components of space missions. Hamilton changed this, and she showed just how important software was for the success of a mission. If the software had not functioned, the moon landing might not have happened. Hamilton is an inspiring example for young women everywhere. She showed that even with limited resources, hard work, dedication, and creative approach, you can achieve incredible things. The Quarantine of the Astronauts Wait. Do you mean you've never heard of moon germs? Well, when man first landed on the moon, the world began to panic about the intergalactic diseases astronauts might bring back to the Earth with them. After launching from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on July 16, 1969, Neil Armstrong, Edwin, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins made it to the moon on July 20th. They explored the moon for a few days, and then they started their journey back to Earth, when they finally splashed down on July 24th. Their mission was complete. But the astronauts weren't quite done yet. They had to spend another 21 days in quarantine. Yes, you heard that right. They had to stay in a special room designed to protect them from any potential diseases they may have encountered while they were in space, in order to make sure that the astronauts were healthy and that no diseases were brought back to Earth. The astronauts had to stay in the same room for three weeks. They had to do all their meals, exercise, and sleep in the same room. They also had to take regular medical tests and wear special suits to prevent anything from entering or leaving the room. So the next time you hear about the Apollo 11 mission, remember that the astronauts did more than just go to the moon. They had to spend three weeks in quarantine too. The Custom Form Signing Did you know that Apollo 11 astronauts had to fill out customs forms before they left for their moon trip? Yep, it's totally true. They had to check a box that said moon under the section that said destination. That's right, they had to fill out the same kind of form that you'd need to fill out when you take a trip abroad. It's kind of funny to think about, but it was a necessary step for the mission. The forms were important because they helped the US keep track of the astronauts and the cargo they were carrying. Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins all had to fill out their own forms which included their names and addresses, the purpose of their flight, and the specific items they were bringing with them. Most ominously in the section marked any other condition on board which may lead to the spread of disease. The response was to be determined. It's a bit of a strange thought, but it's a reminder of just how much planning and preparation went into the mission. Who knew you needed to go through customs on your way back from the moon? The mission control center was restored. Are you ready to take a journey back to the time and era of the moon landing? Recently, NASA has restored the Apollo Mission Control Center, the place from which the Apollo 11 mission was directed in 1969. It's like a time machine! And now, you can get a first-hand look at the room where history was made. The Apollo Mission Control Center has been completely refurbished to look exactly like it did during the Apollo 11 mission, right down to the original wiring and consoles. The restoration project was a huge undertaking and took over four years to complete. The original consoles have been restored and the computers have been replaced with modern systems that can be reprogrammed to replicate the same tasks as the original computers did back in 1969. You can even watch a recreation of the Apollo 11 launch and missions, just like the original mission controllers did. The room also features a large display screen that shows the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. So, if you want to experience a slice of history, the Apollo Mission Control Center is the place to go. It's a one-of-a-kind opportunity to get a first-hand look at the amazing story of the first humans to land on the moon. Thunderstorm at the return Did you know that when Apollo 11 was on its way back to Earth, it almost didn't make it? That's right, thunderstorms were brewing in the landing zone. 
and if the capsule had continued on its planned course, the high altitude winds would have torn the parachutes to pieces, and the capsule would have plummeted into the sea with enough force to kill the astronauts. Scary, huh? But luckily, the killer storm was spotted thanks to the Program 417 weather satellites, and the capsule changed course, heading for a safer splashdown site with better conditions. When Ground Control described the weather in the new landing zone as fine, with three to six foot waves, the astronaut Michael Collins was recorded as saying humorously, the air part of it sounds good. After bobbing around in rough seas, the capsule was successfully recovered, and when President Richard Nixon greeted the astronauts on board the USS Hornet, one of the first things they discussed was the weather. Neil Armstrong had a visionary outlook, saying, We haven't been able to control the weather yet, but that's something we can look forward to in tomorrow's challenge. Well, we haven't quite managed to master the weather yet, but who knows? We put a man on the moon, after all. Smell of the moon Weirdly enough, moon dust smells like something you might recognize. Can you guess what it is? Okay, we'll tell you. It smells like spent gunpowder. When astronauts first landed on the moon and stepped out of their spacecraft, they noticed a smell that was familiar to them. It was a smell that they associated with guns firing. Pretty mysterious, right? The smell is actually caused by the moon dust itself. When the moon dust is broken up, it releases a unique smell that is similar to gunpowder. Scientists believe that this is due to the high levels of iron and magnesium found in the dust. The smell is so strong that it can be detected even when the astronauts are inside the spacecraft. Now that's got to be unsettling. These astronauts also reported that the moon dust is very soft and powdery. It's so soft that it doesn't cause any damage to their equipment or clothing. It's even soft enough that you can carry it in your bare hands. So, if us mere mortals ever get the opportunity to vacation on the moon, Make sure to take a deep breath and take a whiff of the moon dust. Nixon's speech in case of any disaster. Did you know that there was a speech written in case something bad happened to the astronauts on Apollo 11? It's scary to think that something could have gone wrong, but hey, it's always important to be prepared. The speech was written by William Sapphire, who was a speechwriter for President Nixon. It was a short and emotional speech that was meant to be read on television if the astronauts were killed on their mission to the moon. It was a somber speech that went like this. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. These two men are laying down their lives in mankind's most noble goal, the search for truth and understanding. They will be mourned by their families and friends. They will be mourned by their nation. They will be mourned by the people of the world. They will be mourned by a mother earth that dared send two of her sons into the unknown. In their exploration, they stirred the people of the world to feel as one. In their sacrifice, they bind more tightly the brotherhood of man. In ancient days, men looked at stars and saw their heroes in the constellations. In modern times, we do much the same, but our heroes are epic men of flesh and blood. Others will follow and surely find their way home. Man's search will not be denied, but these men were the first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. Yep, we told you it was a somber speech, but we're glad that it never had to be read out. Apollo 11, low on fuel. It was almost 50 years ago that the first ever people landed on the moon, but it wasn't all smooth sailing getting there. The Apollo 11 lunar module was on its historic descent to the moon's crater pocked surface on the 20th of July, 1969. When a fuel light blinked on, that's gotta be the last thing you wanna see when you're sailing through space, it's still 100 feet above the moon. The Eagle's tank was nearly dry. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin recently revealed that the moon landing was incredibly nerve wracking and on the Apollo 11 mission, they had only 15 seconds of fuel left when they finally touched down. The tension was so high that they were both shaking in their space boots. We don't blame them. Can you imagine what that must have felt like? He also said that shortly after they landed, he burst into tears. It's pretty wild to think about how close they came to not making it. We owe a lot of thanks to the incredible engineers that worked on the mission and made sure it was a success. The race to the moon. Alexei Arkhipovich Leonov was a Soviet and Russian cosmonaut, Air Force Major General, writer, and artist. 
He was the first to conduct a spacewalk, and if things had gone differently, he would have been the first to walk on the moon. That's right, Russia nearly won the space race. On the 18th of March 1965, he exited the capsule during the Volkshaw 2 mission for 12 minutes and 9 seconds. When he stepped out of the inflatable airlock, he got a glorious view of the planet stretching out in all directions. But the mission ran into an emergency when his suit started to inflate. He eventually managed to get back to the craft, but he had to bleed half the air out of his suit, which gave him early symptoms of decompression sickness. Then, when the spacecraft had to be manually controlled to land, it ended up in the snow-covered Ural Mountains, miles from the planned landing site. So, Leonov and his fellow crew member had to wait in the freezing conditions until a rescue party found them. Despite the hardships he faced, Leonov will always be remembered as the first person to walk in space, even if he didn't quite make it as the first man to walk on the moon, or the flag on the moon. For almost 50 years, the people of Rod Hiss, North Carolina have been proud of the fact that the material used in the American flag that was planted in the moon's dust was woven right in their town. They'd heard the stories, seen the pictures, and even celebrated the fact that during their bicentennial. So when the town's new manager decided to order a historical marker from the state to commemorate the event, the last thing anyone expected was to be told that the story couldn't be proven. It was a shock to the whole town. Over the years, the flag had become a part of the town's identity. Town leaders had ordered new green signs to place at the town limits. The signs included the astronaut image along with the words, U.S. Moon Flags Woven Here. The story of the moon flag was taught in local elementary schools, and in 1995, a NASA administrator presented the town with a plaque. But in 2014, Art Delaney, the new town manager, decided that the still-standing mill deserved a historical marker from the state. But when a woman from the North Carolina Department of Cultural Resources did some research and returned his call, she told him something that nearly knocked him out of his chair. She said that the story, the one that had been circulating around Road Hiss for nearly five decades, couldn't be proven. Wow, that's gotta be one big shock. We guess the origin of the American flag on the moon is still a mystery. The Saturn V have you ever heard of the Saturn V rocket? This was the rocket that launched Apollo 11 to the moon back in 1969. The Saturn V rocket was 363 feet tall, about the height of a 36-story tall building, and 60 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. That's one big rocket. Fully fueled for liftoff, the Saturn V weighed 6.2 million pounds, the weight of about 400 elephants. The rocket generated 34.5 million newtons of thrust at launch, creating more power than 85 Hoover dams. A car that gets 48 kilometers to the gallon could drive around the world 800 times with the amount of fuel the Saturn V used for a lunar landing mission. Needless to say, it was one of the most impressive feats of engineering of the 20th century. Not only would this stunning piece of human engineering carry humanity to the moon, but it would also facilitate the placement of Skylab, the first space station launched by the US, into low Earth orbit. It's hard to believe the Saturn V was made in the 60s. Apollo Guidance Computer It's amazing to think about the technology that sent humans to the moon. The Apollo Guidance Computer was an integral part of the Apollo missions, and it was a real piece of engineering genius. It was a digital computer with just 36K of RAM and 4K of ROM, with the computer weighing 70 pounds and occupying about the same space as a small refrigerator. It was designed by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the early 1960s and was the first computer of its kind to be used for space exploration. The AGC was a very powerful computer for its time, capable of calculating the complex equations needed to guide a spacecraft to the moon. It was a form of a computer memory known as core rope memory, which used thin strands of wire to store and receive data. This memory was very reliable and could store up to 8,192 bits of information. The AGC was an incredibly complex machine featuring nearly 70,000 transistors and numerous other components. Its programming was extremely intricate, with the first version of the code having nearly 20,000 lines of code. The AGC was used in all of the Apollo missions, including Apollo 11, the first mission to land human beings on the moon. We've got a lot to be thankful for when it comes to this space age computer. Was this landing fake? We're sure you've heard all the conspiracy theory about the 1969 moon landing being actually a hoax. Well, it turns out that millions of people still believe this. 
conspiracy theorists continue to insist the entire mission 50 years ago was an elaborate hoax produced in the Area 51 Air Force testing range in Nevada, or on a Hollywood movie soundstage by legendary director Stanley Kubrick. According to a recent survey, 6% of Americans and 21% of Russians are convinced that the 1969 moon landing was faked. The survey also revealed that almost half of all young people believe that the moon landing was a hoax. That's pretty crazy, right? It's not really surprising that there's still a lot of confusion and disbelief about what really happened during the 1969 moon landing. After all, the technology used in 1969 was pretty primitive by today's standards. However, it won't surprise you to learn that there is a lot of evidence to prove that the 1969 moon landing was real. For example, there are more than 8,400 pounds of moon rocks and soil that have been collected by astronauts during the mission. In addition, there are hundreds of photos and videos of the moon landing that have been reviewed by experts. Yep, everyone is entitled to their opinions. But the evidence is overwhelming in this case. The moon landing really happened, people. Which one of these shocking secrets about the Apollo moon landing has got you shaking in your space boots? You can let us know what you think in the comment section below. And don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. You can also hit subscribe for more awesome content. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.